Welcome back to the Nassman Hockey Podcast. I am James Nichols of the fourth period, and with me, as always, is John Zella. What's up, pal? I'm in my new location. I know, a new location. Uh, I noticed it right away. It does look good. I like the color of the room. Thanks. Yeah, that was uh, all my wife. Had nothing to do with me. The I love us. I mean, uh, I, I support the sentiment. I do. I love her and I. Um, but yeah, this is all all her. You can see like my laundry over there, kind of. Oh, there it is, over there. Uh, you all live like, in my... This is like in my bedroom that. all the time. So yeah. it's uh, now we're both just in our own bedroom. True podcast yeah. form, I think. True podcast form. I, uh, the reason why I'm here is because, uh, as I've stated before, I'm having a baby, and uh, that is happening in actually 60 days, um, if you can believe it. Uh, and I had to get the room together, painted, and made the furniture, put, put the furniture together, and everything. So uh, that is all set and ready, and now it's just a waiting game. Wow. Well, congratulations. Hopefully, you could stick around. <laughs> don't worry i will definitely be here um side note happy pride month we missed that last week just wanted to make note and recognize that this week um you know in case any of our listeners do celebrate we are celebrating with you yeah a lot of cool celebrations all over there's a lot of organizations you can support go in your area i know uh for if there's anybody in central new york acr health and there's a lot of other groups and uh, i know last weekend was our big pride event and a lot of other stuff going on so yeah check that out support your friends and fellow human beings absolutely uh with that let's get to the hockey and uh we'll start with the western conference final because the avalanche sweep the edmonton oilers wanted to start with what your thoughts were on that series john what did you see i'm not surprised the abs are just such a good team um what's sticking out to me is that the Evander Kane hit right now on Kadri and kind of, you know, and then thinking about what that next series is going to be because the Avalanche are also, weren't they also out somebody else, a defender? Yes. They lost Sam Gerrard. So that's kind of too. Kadri had a heck of a playoff run up into that point. So now yeah, I'm thinking about not only is this team, they have a long break after a sweep, which Tampa just did. And they're kind of going, they, they play game four tonight. Um, as we're doing this anyway uh, with the Rangers. So by the time you're hearing this, you know what the outcome is. Um, you know, they they were able to kind of win game three there, um, but they're they're behind the eight ball for sure. Uh, so and now the Avalanche are going to be in the same position where they need to wait. Um, I don't know if Gerard can come back. It doesn't sound like Kadri's going to at all. So now, you know, the series was, you know, McDavid and Dreisaitl on one leg. You just saw him wincing the entire time. And he still, they still put up just a ridiculous amount of points. I forget between the two of them in 13 games. I think they games. each had something like the 30s, which is insane. Yeah, it was, it was nuts. And, you know, so dry sidle on one leg is, is doing it and it's unbelievable. And, yeah, um, eventually the, the avalanche just kind of figured it out. Who was the, who was the defender? Was it McCarr who went stride for stride backwards with McDavid? Yeah. Broke up that, like, you have to think something's going on with McDavid. I've heard a couple other people say it. Um, I, I, you know, everyone's kind of injured at a certain point, but, or at his case, maybe just tired. Um, you know, McCarr's a good skater, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm not surprised. Mike Smith, Wolf, talk about an upgrade. You want to, yeah, if there was ever a place for, for Varlamov to go. Um, it, it, I don't know what they get in return. They're not, you know, he's but, not going. He won't do um, it, right? So, it, you know, it makes sense on uh, on paper, but it's yeah. I don't, again, I don't know what they would, I don't know what the Islanders would get in return, but yeah, Mike Smith like simultaneously stands on his head and then will like put the puck in his own net. It's yeah, it's incredibly I, frustrating. Yeah, I, I was um, actually listening to, of course, who else do I listen to? Elliot Friedman and Jeff Merrick the other day, and they were talking about how last summer. Um, it did not sit well with the Oilers, and and that's why the Oilers and Flame series was um, partially so good. The Oilers were they they believed that they had Jacob Markstrom locked up. The, the contract was all but signed, and then last minute he was like, "I'm going to Calgary." So they thought that they had their goaltending goaltending issue figured out, um, and then last minute that that switched. So 
And it turned uh, out like, and then the Oilers go ahead and beat him, which is yeah. poetic justice. Yes, absolutely. It's great. So, uh, but really, by the third round, you need somebody to kind of be there for you. And even yeah. that, look at the Islanders. Even that doesn't doesn't won't lock it up for you. You know, yeah. you still need it at the other end. And by the end of that series of the Avalanche, Edmonton just kind of ran out of steam. I mean, they were going back and forth, but and I know I didn't get to watch. I didn't get to watch the whole game. Um, you know, Edmonton's up, Avalanche are up. They get it tied. This goes back and forth, and uh, it was kind of a little bit of a barn burner. Most of those games, um, outside yeah. of a four nothing shutout uh, by the Avalanche, but yeah, I think they just ran it out, ran out of steam there. Yeah, so I mean, I'm I'm with you there. Um, you know, the the Avalanche looked like a machine. You know, I, I know that they lost Gerard. I know that they lost Kadri. Um, however, they have already swept before in this playoffs. They swept Nashville, and then they went on to play St. Louis, and they were fine. They beat St. Louis as well. They lost um, two games so far. Am I making they've that They've only up? lost two games. They're twelve and two in the playoffs. So that's I, a run. Yeah, that's, that's a that's that's a serious run. I I understand the loss of Kadri and Gerard are both big impacts. However, let's just say that this Rangers uh, Lightning series goes seven games. They'll have nine days off. Um, that that might be good bad. Look at the Lightning. You that know, might be they... good bad. However, it also might be good good if Kadri recovers in that time and can come back. And they are they're only down Sam Gerard because I think mind he had you, surgery. Is that uh, not like ooh, Ger- Gerard or oh, Kadri. you mean Kadri? Yeah, Kadri had surgery. I, I don't know if it was his thumb. You might be right. Um, is it 14 days? Is that enough? Like, you, it might, the, you know what, man? Hockey players are a friggin' different breed. Okay. Leon Dreisaitl he, in this in this series was, I, I don't even, he was like put together with toothpicks and gum. And he was out there with, we had four points last night. I know. I Is it? I know we always say like the toughness thing and blah, like, is that tough or dumb? I'll say like this. He's, he's, I, I get you're like, you've never made it to this far in the playoffs before and all of that. But is that worth like your future career? Like you'd rather never play again. God for, you know, hopefully he, he can. I don't know that there's any reason why he can't. It's an yeah. injury, but you never, you never know. Or at least look at Carlson. These guys come back from injury and they date really quickly or this, or they play through yeah. it. No, and listen, it's I'll- not the same. I'm with you. It, the only thing that you could say is it's up to the player. And if the player decides I want to play, what are you going to tell him? You know, unless he's literally unable to do it, if he can play, what are you going to do? You, you every can't time, tell him no. Every time he got hit, it was like, I you just kind of like, I, I turned away a little bit. Even in the highlights, I had watched it before and still like I was wincing. I was like, Ooh, is he, yeah. I don't even know how he's getting up. Like if he fell down, I did not understand how he was standing back up on the bench he was like just writhing in pain every single shift like I, yeah i don't know that, that that's worth whatever you're a putting yourself through and b risking your future self you know as somebody that's really good like if, if you're the oilers it's after game two you're down 2-0 or even halfway through game three do you just call it like you really you really think you're gonna will your team on a bro and then you got to play the final is it worth just getting to the final? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell still, you this. It's crazy to me. Here's here's another perspective on this, right? Um, whereas I, I totally understand your take on that. Uh, think of the other side of the coin where Kadri is a free agent this summer. And he's thinking about his future regardless. I need a contract. I need to prove myself that I am one. I can be. Uh, I can withstand an injury and continue to play. So that that means that team is going to want to sign me. And two, that I can perform at this level, and and teams will pay me for that. So he's trying he's to secure his future already, in that I, sense as well. I think he's proved that in this. Play. I agree. Like, I don't think he needs to come back and and do it. Well, I agree, but uh, but there's something to be said about when you continue to perform at a high level or at an elite level, or uh, I guess yeah, and at an elite level, he did that this season. And there's something to be said about that when you do it on the grandest stage. And I think he he probably one wants to obviously play for the cup. A hundred percent. But two, that also will only help him in negotiations this summer. Yeah, I think in this case, I, like I think he, I yes, a hundred percent. I understand what you're saying. I think getting hurt in a way that's not like you're not prone to this injury before. It was a dirty hit. Yeah. This and that, like I don't know. I, I don't know that it'll hurt him so much this summer. Um, he might not leave Colorado. 
he might not. Know, if they can if they can keep him. I don't know why they they. Yeah, I, I, they and again, that's. I feel like that it's unlikely he'll stay just because Nathan McKinnon's contract's coming up and he's going to be due for a hell of a pay raise. Um, and I, I, I don't know uh, if Miko Rantanen or any any of the other supporting cast um, are due for raises as well. Maybe Bowen Byram soon because I know he's on a um, he's still on his ELC. But um, that that's a team that has had some good luck with some pretty good contracts. Um, and if they want to keep Kadri, they're going to probably have to do it at a discount. And if he's willing to, to, you know, continue winning with that outstanding team that they have, um, I think that, you know, it, that's that's a possibility. So they have a uh, lot of UFAs. Holy yeah. Geez. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Kadri might not, you know, be um, feasible in the same breath. I think the kid Alex Newhook is a high and prospect who, if I'm not mistaken, was drafted as a center. So maybe they're looking for him to take the, ne- the next step. Um, but we'll see. The Colorado Avalanche punched their ticket to the Stanley Cup playoffs. Uh, it was an incredible series. And and if it told me anything, um, like the rest of the playoffs have, if there's any team that can overcome the injuries that they've sustained and still win the cup, it's the Avalanche. Yeah. I, I, I mean, the Tampa Bay Lightning are going through the same thing without Braden Point. They've they've had players in and out. They didn't have Stamkos in in the in one of the runs. I guess the first one. Yeah. Um. Although he came back and scored a goal and and left, and that was pretty amazing. The big but, question mark is going to be Darcy Kemper because he's hurt, and they're running Pavel Francouz. But at the same time, and in the same breath, if you're controlling the puck the entire game. <laughs> I guess it doesn't really matter who's yeah. in net for you. It's it's an actually insane uh, amount of time that they they hold on to the puck. So um, I do want to go ahead. I was going to ask, did you see the little voiceover somebody made um, on Twitter? They they were reading lips after the Avalanche won, and they were talking to each other about are we, are we going to touch the trophy? Are we? Yeah, yeah I'm I'm going to touch it, and then. Uh, oh no, I didn't Eric, see that. Eric Johnson's like, nah, nah, I'm not gonna touch it. And Devin Tays is like, I'm touching it. That's a big trophy. <laughs> no, that's really funny. No, I didn't I didn't yeah. see that. You'll have to check that out. It was a really cool voiceover. Um, it got like a lot of attention on uh on Twitter. So I'll, I'll send that your way, or maybe we'll tweet it out from the account so uh, our listeners can hear it too. But it was it was a really cool breakdown and voiceover of the uh the celebration and then taking a picture with the uh the trophy after they won. So well, what what were you gonna say? No, I just, it, it's been a little bit of a running joke. I've heard it a lot of different places at this point, but I keep forgetting Darren Helm is still in the NHL. Yeah. Can you? How old do you think he is? Um, I I think he's in his early thirties. He's he's thirty five. Oh, okay. All right, mid thirties. He he won a cup with Detroit in 0708. Yeah, was... I feel like he's been on this team since like the '97 Cup. Yeah, like he's he... he's he. I feel like he's been around like that era. Was that of... his rookie year when he won with Detroit? Yeah, yeah. So that makes sense. Yeah, he played like seven regulars. I don't know when. I guess he came late in the season, or yeah. you know, with enough time to go play because he played 18 playoff games and seven regular season games. And is I I, I mean, he was playing in Detroit the last few years, and obviously they're not doing very well, so you don't hear about him as much. So I don't know. You kind of maybe the last like four seasons. I, I didn't think this guy was around. And again, I just associate him with the Red Wings from a really long time ago. Yeah. And I think everyone does. So you're just like, oh yeah, like Lindstrom, and that it must have been the '90s. And then you're like, oh wow, he's no, nope, he's still, he's still playing, and he's on the Avalanche. Like, yeah, holy crap. I I I kept hearing that, and then just never looked up any of his information. Yeah, and it's speaking of you know older players who are still playing in this league, not that JT Confer's older like like that, but do you see the series he's having? He's playing incredible. I did, they, the playoffs even. He's having incredible playoffs for for the Avalanche. He's like one of the unsung heroes on that team. I think he's got like seven goals. He who, scored Helm? that. Yeah. Oh no no. I'm sorry. JT Confer. JT Confer. No, I uh, that name kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah, so he he um the other night was sprung out of the penalty box and scored that breakaway goal on Mike Smith. At the same time, people were saying, you know, Mike Smith should have had that. Um, however, he's just showing up in big moments like that. So JT Confer is a is a a great story in the playoffs right now. It, it's one of those he's one of those guys on the team where you're like, oh yeah, I, you know, 
that that's a that's a good bottom six piece. But he's one of the also one of the guys who's like performing one of the best for them. And and you expect the Landis Gogs and the McKinnons and the Rantanins to score the goals, but Comfort's also contributing there. And so that's, it's I've said crazy. I think the bottom six is really like your star players are going to score goals, but yeah. your bottom six is really important, and that's ultimately where you're going to win championships. Look at those. Yeah. Look at the OT goal to win the series. It wasn't one of those guys. It wasn't a big player. It was somebody else. I forget. It was Epper. Uh, no, it was Lettinen. Lekinen? Oh, Lekinen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Arturi Lekinen. Um, they acquired him from Montreal. Yeah. So it's it's not any. It's it's a it's a depth piece, and not to like call them. You know, they're not bad players or whatever. It's just your your McKinnons are gonna kind of knock off your McDavid's, right? They, maybe they have three points each in a game, but when you're in this playoffs anyway, I want to say in today's game, but in this playoffs where you're, you're sc- each team scoring four, five, six goals, you're going to need somebody to score that sixth goal for you, that fifth goal for you. That's not one of your top players because they're yeah. just keeping you in the game. They're keeping pace. Yeah. And that's where the depth is really important. So when we think about the Islanders, here's the transition for you. When we, So when we think about the Islanders, or we could talk about the Tampa Rangers series as well and some other <laughs> NHL stuff. But when, you, when you're thinking about the Islanders, and you think, oh, Palmieri's got to be a top six player. I don't know, because if all he needs to do is score five or six goals in the playoffs next to Pajot, and all, he's a hero. Yeah. And to have him as a regular player, you don't need to go acquire him. That's you know, true. A, when, you, when you have that depth and a bunch of guys that can contribute, yeah, there's need a top line. That It's like not a secret. They, they need a top line that can really bring them to the next level. And when ultimately win you some of the hockey games, but when they're not on and they're unlucky or whatever the case is, they're hitting posts. They're just getting big. Other goalies coming up big. You need that bottom six to kind of come up big for you, right? Nelson could just go cold in, in the first round. Yeah. Um, you, you need kind of a, a team effort to be cliche to, to make it happen. So when you think about the honest roster, you can't just be tossing like you can't just be, trading Palmieri away and that's why I worry about a Bavillier who's showed up in the playoffs and and not in the regular season and okay yeah Wallstrom's around and he's a sniper for sure but he's got to develop a little bit can he do it on the second line can can he be that player if they're going to um put two new wingers uh, potentially next to Barzell like when you look at a team like the Avalanche you it's very clear that depth and and even the uh, Tampa Bay Hell, even the Rangers, you know, the kid line's coming up big for them um, in, in, in multiple different ways. Uh, Heedle seems to be scoring all the goals for them, which is, you know, on that line anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, you need, it's seeing that balance and in, in the success of the Islanders the last few seasons. Um, when you're thinking about that roster moving forward, I, I think it's important to remember that. Yeah. A uh, lot, lot of questions about the Islanders roster for this summer lots of players said to be available we'll we'll talk about that a little later first I do want to talk about the uh, Tampa New York Rangers series thus far game four is tonight Um, I was listening to again Elliot Friedman and Jeff Merrick um, and Friedman had an interesting comment about a, a league executive who he was talking to during that game and it was tied uh, in, in the third period of game three and the league executive had said to him next goal wins the series, meaning whoever takes game three wins the whole series. And sure enough, the lightning wound up taking game three. The Rangers still have a two to one series lead. And I just thought that was really interesting um, just because you can um, you, you could you could feel the momentum shift when it when it happened. However, do, I, I, I don't know if I could sit here confidently and say that was a, a series shifting momentum shift or just a game series uh, or I'm sorry, a, a game momentum shift. Like, is what, what are your thoughts on that? Is it a, a series shifting momentum swing? It could. I mean, the Rangers have gone through the ringer in this playoffs. They, they've been down. They've come back. They have played really good teams. Backup goalies or otherwise. I don't know that I would take the wind out of their sails so easily. like, I, And I don't think the Lightning necessarily can do that. I think they know who they're playing. They came out guns blazing um, with, with MSG behind them. Um, you know, Shosturkin is not Vasilevsky yet, but he's given him a pretty good run in this series. And yeah. 
you know, when I'm when I'm sitting there watching this series and I'm like, man, Tampa's so good. They're controlling the puck. Shesterkin is just not phased. It's a lot like you, when you when the Islanders had their moments against Tampa the last two seasons, yeah. and Vasilevsky's just not phased. He's just kind of knocking pucks. Islanders aren't great on the offense either, but you know they 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 always had their moments of sustained pressure, um, whether they were winning games or coming from behind or whatever. And you look at Shesterkin now, and he's he's calm, cool, and collected in there. I, I don't see any stress on there. He's not doing anything crazy. No exaggerated movements. He doesn't seem phased by the back-to-back defending Stanley Cup champion. So I don't know that I would just do it that easy. It's it's going to be pressure on some of the younger players. Yeah. Do they have the gas in the tank to kind of go? I see it going six, seven games. I don't I don't think somebody just kind of walks through this now and in, in, you know, three more maybe is three more games is uh is is six games. So it's gotta if Tampa wins it, they have to to make it that far. So I don't know. I think it depends if, if Tampa seems to be having a little bit of a tough time getting it going. I definitely saw them getting shut down in the last game quite a bit and not really being able to get through the neutral zone. Um, Rangers are playing a little safe. We've seen that from the Islanders. So that shouldn't be too much of a surprise. That's, you know, boring hockey is going to win you a game. Um, this game might, might hinge on a lot. Can, can Tampa Bay, get the momentum fully behind them. Because if they win this game, the next two out of three are MSG. That might be enough for them. The Rangers just need to um, win at home the rest of the way. Like they can lose this game and they can even lose game six and it doesn't matter. They just need to win the rest of the way at home. Um, Is that enough? Maybe. That might just playing at home might be enough for them. They've had a lot of success so far that way. Yeah, you, you could be right, but in the same breath, they're still the defending champs. So if you give them too much momentum, they're going to take advantage. They're going to kick the crap out of you in there, and they're going to take the series. I mean, look what they did against the literal best team in the NHL this season, the Florida Panthers. They swept them. See ya. Yeah, I, I think the Panthers, too, uh, they won a lot of those games in overtime during the regular season. They were a machine on the way into the playoffs. But I, I think they were a little bloated. I don't think they were the best. But now Tampa wasn't the best team in the regular season. I don't. They've proven that's just not necessary. Yeah, the Islanders too. Um, this is one of the few years where it's the you know top three teams in each conference making it, um, making it this far and ultimately to the to the Cup final. Um, so it's yeah, I, I definitely agree. You can't give them too much much momentum, but they do have to take it back. Yes, they won that game, but. The Rangers have been very good. So they yeah. Tampa needs to they need to come in there like the cup champs. Yeah. I think the thing with the Rangers is that they've not, they've not only been good, but they've been getting better every game, every series. They've just become better and better as the days go on. So it was um, like the Islanders. They now they're there. Like, all right, it's not we don't belong here playing with house money. Yeah. We belong they belong there. They're yeah, up two no one fluke. against it's you know, it's I, I know that's really hard for us to to say, I think. Um, as as an Islander show, but credit well credit is due. We, you know we can't sit there and and uh, you know let's be better than Ranger fans when they were saying the Islanders were a fluke the last two seasons, and then they yep. you know they shit the bed this year. Um, you know that's it. It's definitely hard to hear, but we don't need to do that. Um, they're they're playing well. And I don't know. I don't know if what where they'll come out in this series. I. I want to say Tampa is going to win just because that makes me feel better <laughs> as an Islander fan. Um, and I don't necessarily mind the narrative about Tampa beating the Islanders record for playoff series wins or three cups in a row and a dynasty. I, it doesn't really bother me. Um, it's interesting. You get, you know, very rarely do you get to watch history in real time and and know that it's something really special. Um, and like I said, two weeks ago or a week ago, avalanche lightning is, I, you know, Rangers are playing really well. That is not going to be as good of a series as a lightning avalanche. So I think selfishly, um, a lot of people just want to see that. Yeah, I, I think either way, whoever gets the cup final in the East, I, I just have this feeling. Uh, and I was I actually wore my Peter Forsberg jersey today. I'm not wearing it now, but um, I just have this feeling that the this is the avalanche's year. They, they, they're they going to take it. They're a, a well-oiled machine. 
barring any unforeseen injuries further to the roster that, that are maybe detrimental. Um, if they could stay healthy, that's just McKinnon, McCarr, uh, Rantanen, Landis, Gog, Taze, like they're all just firing on all cylinders. And um, if there's any downfall for, for the avalanche, maybe it's the goaltending. We'll see if Kemper returns, but again, it doesn't matter who's in net. If you're controlling the puck, the whole game. I mean, look, uh, they, I, I they only won so. six. They won six, five against Edmonton on yeah. one and a half superstars, you know, on, on, on dry saddles, one leg. Like, yeah, I don't know. They, like the uh, Edmonton is not the lightning. So if it's the lightning or even the Rangers for that matter, who yeah, have some right. depth, they might be in for a world of hurt. They're definitely, uh, you know, the blues were like this for a long time where they'd make it really far. And a lot of people had them as their team in the West, even the lightning for a while. Like they were always on the cusp, always on the cusp. And now they're there. They're in the final. Yeah. And like, is this going to be their next hurdle? And then how hard it is to get back there next year um, to do it two years in a row. Forget about the, the conference final and, you know, and on either side to make it to the final again is, is ridiculous. That's the lightning. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't really know. If the if the Avalanche they need to do it, this yeah. is their, like with the you know roster as you said I you know and I didn't know their their situation like half their forwards are UFAs, that's yeah. crazy, yeah. Um, and if you're gonna lock up your main guys who's who have already taken a, a team deal in the past, um, you know you 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 want to make sure you do it this year so that they're all they must all be playing for each other. Yeah, exactly. So. By this time next week, maybe we'll have an answer. Um, it's possible. It may not happen uh, at, in that amount of time either. Maybe they do need a game seven. So uh, we will find out uh, within the next week or so who will be playing the Avalanche in the Stanley Cup final. Uh, shifting over to Boston, a little bit of shakeup going on there. And by a little, I mean, actually, it's kind of major. Uh, Bruce Cassidy was fired from the Boston Bruins as their head coach. Um, and, and the first question I had for you was, was this as surprising as Barry Trotz getting fired from the Islanders? I think so. With the success the Bruins have had, although their playoffs have kind of ended in the second round the last few seasons. Yeah. Um, through a lot of things that he can't control necessarily, a lot like Trotz. Um, it's not as surprising. He's a really good coach, and that's what's weird. Um, but I don't. I don't know if it's I don't know if it's surprising. Like he hasn't been able to get his team over the hump the last few years. They've been beaten by the Islanders and 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 other teams. They, they just you know they can't uh, the Hurricanes this year. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not I'm not sure it's more surprising. It's Trotz had one bad year. Cassidy still made the playoffs. Yeah, they just did get over the hump. Now I would understand if he got fired next season if they did it again and they added players and they kind of rebuilt uh retooled on the go and and got made their roster better but you know they were kind of piecing it together a little bit they they lost crew they lost chara um ultimately wasn't uh re-signed and, and went to the capitals and then the islanders like they were kind of go like retooling on the go um they lose they lose krejci um oh we're gonna talk about that too so i think that's what does he have to work with? And that's kind of the, the same thing you'd say with Trotz, right? He was kind of dealing with what he was working with. Now, the difference is with Trotz is that he it, he supposedly had a year left on his deal. And Lamarillo was worried about losing him and Lambert. If Lambert goes for another team this year and they decide not to bring Trotz back, which they may have already been planning to do, keep your guy. Yeah. Keep the future of your team as much as Trotz was a really good coach. If you need to make the move now, you know, a short-term pain for long-term gain, go for that. Do that thing. Um, it's confusing, and you have to wait for it to kind of play out in real time. And the real time is going to last a long time because it's it's been already like, it feels like two months, and there's still three more to go until even camp remotely gets started. Yeah, it's uh, just, it's crazy to think about a coach getting fired after he has these kind of numbers since 2016, 17, he's never had below a 652 points percentage as a head coach. 685 and 1617. To what end? To what end though? 680. 
50 wins, 49 wins, 44 wins, 33 wins in a 56 game season, 51 wins. Uh, he's, but there were reasons and we will talk about those. Well, uh, my, my point is like to, to what end, like the team, where were, um, where were they making, like they, they were making the playoffs and then what? They won the Eastern Conference final uh, a couple of years ago. Yeah, 18-19. Yeah. They lost in the second round the last two seasons. Um and that's that's kind of it. Not yeah. that's not it's not nothing. But I I don't know, you kind of you're you're hoping for a little bit more I think at that point. Yeah, so th- maybe that that that's part of the reason, you know, the the success in the playoffs. Um, however, Sean Hutchinson of the fourth period uh, writes that, you know, David Crunchy left because he was tired of Bruce Cassidy. Um, Patrice Bergeron may have said that he won't return if he's there. Uh, Cassidy's record speaks those, for itself. So, you know, you wonder what the rift was. But, you know, those are two key pieces to the success of the Boston Bruins. Are, they, in recent are both history. of those speculation, though? Uh, th- those Christ, are he and- so he he said in the in the article that um, those are quote unquote unconfirmed. However, they're sourced from multiple uh, sources around the Boston Bruins that he's spoken to. That's definitely interesting. Yeah. So those are, and it, it, it's not like a random like oh I heard this. It, these are sourced from within the Bruins organization um, that he was told that both. Uh, David Krejci left because of Bruce Cassidy. He was tired of, of playing for him. Patrice Bergeron has said openly that he will not resign if Bruce Cassidy is still there. Uh, he even went as far as to say in the uh, the worlds that just ended, there was a shot of David Krejci talking to David Pasternak. Mm-hmm. And in that shot, Krejci was asking Pasternak, are you going to go back next year and play for Cassidy? And they kind of played it off when they were asked. Well, he said he's coming it. back to Boston. I don't think he to said to play for back. Cassidy. Yeah, but he doesn't say that in the in the video. But that's what it was implying in the in the article. Oh uh, yeah, if if that well, okay, that's where we need to be careful with that kind of stuff, or that person needs to be careful with that. No, that that is not not what the video implied. Um, if there's a known riff, that's one thing, and I guess you can speculate on it, but. He did not say that in the video. He said, are you coming back to Boston? Because I remember I saw, I watched the video. He just asked if he's coming back to Boston. Nothing about the coach. Absolutely nothing about that. That's, right. Well, I, I understand that's where you're this, coming from. That's kind I'm of, just saying that the 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 sentiment in the in the article was that there are all of these, there's, there's all this speculation that there was a rift between the players, much like how maybe... Trotz quote unquote lost the room in, in a different way. Cassidy way lost the room here. And, you know, guys like Bergeron and Krejci don't want to play for him. And, um, you know, they're, they're getting in Pasternak's young ear. Like you want to lose David Pasternak. So it, it, there's just the, the belief there that Cassidy and the players were at odds. That can be true. It happens all the time. Um, yeah, I guess I just want to be careful with that, like where where he's speculating from and and kind of discussing other things. That's uh, that's a little difficult. Hockey fans, the pursuit for the Stanley Cup is on, and DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL, has an unbelievable offer for the most exciting playoffs in sports. New customers can bet five dollars on any team to win and get one hundred dollars in free bets, no matter what, win or lose. Looking to turn a small bet into a big payday during the playoffs? With DraftKings Same Day Game Parlays, you can do just that. Create your own parlay by combining multiple bets, like which team will win, how many goals will be scored, and more. It's your shot at even bigger payouts. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. Best of all, you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now, use promo code THPN, bet $5 on any NHL team to win, and get $100 in free bets, no matter what. That's code THPN at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. And I guess when it rains, it pours, John, because things are crumbling even further uh, in Boston 
with Fluto Shinzawa, the uh, Athletics Boston Bruins reporter, suggests today that the Bruins might entertain a David Pasternak trade to kickstart a rebuild. Um, one that's, is that that's and that's his spe- again his speculation. That's his speculation. Worth discussing, but his speculation. I just want to make that very clear. Yes, that's his speculation. However, it's backed by reason, which we will talk about. But first, before we talk about reason, if this is in fact going to happen, can the Islanders afford a David Posternock? It's unlikely he's available. It's even more unlikely the Islanders can afford it. He'd okay. be a heck of a rental, I think, for any team. Um, I think it's worth to pony up at that point. But I, I don't know that it's it's worth it right now unless you know you can sign him. And that's if you can actually like get that deal to go through and not way, way overpay in the same conference. Because they did just play each other a few years ago in the in the yeah. in the playoffs. So it's it's obviously likely. Um there's only so much there's only eight teams that make it and um Boston's always really good. I don't know how good they're gonna they would be without a Pasternak and if if that's the case, like if Bergeron doesn't return and they really do deal Pasternak, yeah, they're in full rebuild mode. That's you just lost your your pretty much your top line if Krejci's not coming back. Yeah, I don't think the Islanders can afford it though. I don't know that any of us would even have the stomach to figure out what to suggest what that trade might be. Well, I, I suggested it today and i said something along the lines of you're dealing your 13th overall pick you're dealing oliver wallstrom you're dealing um what what else did i say in this deal anthony bavillier and you're dealing atu to to get david pashanak is that enough i don't really know that's just what i came up with It, it seems like a lot but The thing is, you're probably right. It's probably not going to happen within the conference. If the Bruins want to trade Pasternak in order to kickstart a rebuild, he's probably going west. What I will say, though, is that look at all the names that are on the free agent market or are on the possibly available market, including free agency. Johnny Gaudreau, Philip Forsberg, now David Pasternak, Alex DeBrinkett, which we'll talk about. Um, There's all these these big names, Kevin Fiala, like these names are out there that are not normally out there in this abundance that kind you think of. to yourself, you think to yourself, can like Lamoral kind of has to come away with one of these, but oh, he, we, this is, um, I'm going to struggle to watch this team. This podcast might not make it if, <laughs> if, if, if there's not again. And I said this before, he needs to make an impact move. It's not a wait and see if this works out. Um, what does Lamoral got? What does he see in this player that we don't? Nope. It's got to be clear as friggin' day that this player is going to make a difference. or these players are going to make a difference. Pasta would absolutely be that person. I I don't think anyone would have to think too hard about that. I think in conference that that package you put together, you're really you're really kind of uh, selling the farm on a guy that's um, you know he's 26, so he's he's around for a long time. But when you're making these kinds of deals, and I know I know we kind of keep discussing this a little bit. And there, you know, if you're going to add, you need to subtract, and and there's always that kind of discussion. But you still need depth on these teams. And if your bottom six is locked up, including you know Parise being back, and, and including him on that third line with Peugeot and and Parise, you need you still need a second line. You know, is is are you just kind of leaning on Bailey, or you you got it now that you have Pasternak, um, and you, you traded Wallstrom. You need somebody in your top six. Who's the other guy in the wing on uh, on Barzell's wing? Well, the thing is, the Islanders have a plethora of forwards. They they can deal from a position of strength. Um, and if it means trading Wallstrom in order to get Pasternak, you know, I, I get that you're trading a little bit more than just Wallstrom, but you're also inserting one of the best players in the NHL into the lineup. So, but you got to might... my point is you got to do you still have to fill that first yeah, line, and that's what free agency spot. For. Yeah, you just have to have the money for it. And then you got to re-sign Barzell next season and you're going to have to re-sign Pasternak. Well, right. And 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 no. now let me ask you this. Doesn't trading for a Pasternak And listen, I don't think that this is going to happen. I'm not I'm not saying it will. Just for argument's sake. Wouldn't trading for a Pasternak or someone like a Pasternak convince Barzell that yeah, we're in it to win it and convince him that he wants to stay? 
because he has to sign a contract too. This isn't the way to do it. I'm going to shut it down right there. This isn't this fine. this isn't the, this isn't the way to do it. That's fine, right? If this is the but, last option, and I, Boston really does want to make that trade, I guess you go for it. The my issue is not does it help. It's you're never going to hear it, it's not going to help for me. You, the words. David Pasternak or X player that has had scored over 30 goals will not help the Islanders. That's not a thing I'm going to say. It's after that. Okay, great. So next year they win the cup and then Brazil, they don't have the money to resign him. Then you lose Pasternak. He's not around. And you also lost Bavillier and Ratsu and Wallstrom. Pasternak's not going to resign you at 27 years old. Had they can't afford that. How do you they, know? They have, How do you know they don't afford that? They, that's, they, still that's, have to, they have to bring in a, a backup goalie. After now, I understand it's five million off the books, but they still have yeah. to get a goalie. If you're going to bring in a Chikrin on D, that's and that's another well, trade. Okay, now that's, that's the thing. If, so, you, that's if saying, you're you get, you if you're trading for a Pasternak type, you're probably going to have to settle for something less than a Chikrin. Like these are these are the decisions that need to be made this summer. If you're going to get a chicker in that you're then the forward you're going to get is not going to be half as good as a David Pasternak. That that's, that's the the thing here. And that that's, yeah. that's how these things are going to play out. I think Dobson still needs a bridge deal this year. Um, that comes out of that 12 million. You have to consider Barzell next season. Yeah, of course. Um, Bailey comes off the books in two more seasons, which is, is really tough. Um, if you're trading Wallstrom, I guess you're not worrying about his, his deal coming up after this season. Um, the thing is, you need two, in theory, even with Salo, you might still need two defenders. And then you still need another winger up top. I understand what you're saying. That I don't know that they're dealing from the position of strength in an everyday lineup that you think they are. When you subtract, if you subtract Bailey and Bavillier, that's one thing. They can still put their roster together. I think that works. You add a Goudreau, for instance. You can go find that diamond in the rough top winger for Barzell. I I hear what you're saying. Absolutely. It just in my opinion, if the Islanders had a chance, I, again, don't think they're going to, but if they had a chance to get David Poshnok and I was worried about how to fill the second and third line with other forwards, that's not stopping me from acquiring David Bosnock. And neither is neither is the, the contracts in the future because, again, I think acquiring him would tell Barzell, we're serious about winning long term. Here is your similar age elite winger to play with you for the next eight years if you want. We'll sign you both to similar contracts. Have at it. Go win some go, they, go, go win some go win some hardware. Both players are going to get 10 mil. And they're gonna, and then they have to re-sign. Uh, Sorokin needs a deal in two years. He's if he's playing his, you know, yeah, he's gonna be going into his age twenty nine season. So, but he's still gonna get a raise. Like, so I'll say this: I, I was reading, and I don't know if you read it. This just came out like an hour ago. But uh, Shinazawa wrote another article based around if the uh, Bruins were gonna trade Pasternak. And this is why I'm going to agree with you that uh, dis- I'm sorry, disagree with you that it's unlikely that Pasternak's even available. Uh, in his latest, he details the history, starting with how Tory Krug's situation was not handled uh, the right way by Don Sweeney, the GM of the Bruins, and later David Krejci's as well, um, which is why Krejci opted to go to partially because of Cassidy, partially because of Sweeney, opted to go back to the Czech Republic. Um who, by the way, Krug and Krejci are both claimed to be Pasternak's best friends. Um, and he's talking about the personal side of this. And I, and I understand money can talk and that can keep Pasternak around. And, you know, I also don't love getting caught up in the best friend thing because I've argued against it in saying if the Islanders trade Bovillier, it'll get Barzell all, all um, angry and he won't want to stay either. I don't like to get caught up in that. However... The source that Shinazawa of the, the the Bruins reporter of the Athletic spoke to said, and this is another another close to David Prostanak source, no way he comes back 
with Sweeney as GM because he sat back and he watched what happened to these players and he realized that this organization doesn't take care of their own. I mean, if that's truly the case and and they really did mess up, um, yeah, and they and they're and they're gonna trade Foster. Not like I said, if the Islander, I will. I'm not gonna say I'm gonna walk back what I said. I'm not gonna like shit on this team if they get Pasternak. I will I will root harder than anybody this season and, and they will figure it out, right? Like I don't I'm just Would you buy in, a foam finger? I sure. Get me one. I have I have two fisherman hats, my jerseys, <laughs> whatever you want. I have flags, whatever you whatever. I'll I'll be I'll stand on top of the uh the 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 yes Q, uh ambulance. And whatever, I'll, if I could, if I could do a backflip, I'd do it. Um, I think in the position that we're in now, right? It's it's we're kind of galaxy braining a lot of shit. What we need, we just need to consider what after the trading a Wallstrom and a Ratu and like the future of the team. That window, I don't know if it opens. Maybe it opens a little wider, but not for very long with a Pasternak. Because you traded a lot of the depth. You trade like Bavillier is a young guy, even though he's struggling, but Aratu and a Wallstrom, you're putting a lot of faith in a Bellows. Where does he fit in the lineup? How is that going to work? I guess you're moving Parise up the lineup, uh, Parise, Palmieri up the lineup a little bit. And all that's doable. You're not wrong in that case, right? I just don't want to go into the season like, oh, we got our guy. We'll fill the second. The the guy next the the player next to Dobson on the second pair with whomever. Um, guess Andy Green's gonna come back on the cheap. He'll play with like I just don't want it to be like oh okay we got our guy. Here's a bunch of who gives a shit guys. We know with how Lambert is likely to coach this team. That's that's just simply not gonna work. Well, I'll, if you I'll sell say this. If, if you sell too much of what this team is look and that's that's acknowledging that Bailey and Bavillier will likely go. Or hopefully they they both go in deals with to get a defense minute of this and of that. It is a little safer if this is where you're going to know you have your guy to trade for somebody with term, and at least you can negotiate through the season to get to to extend them. Um, and free agency is not guaranteed. If you can make the move ahead of right. time, I think Lamarola would prefer that anyway. He said as much. Let's try to find somebody right with term. Um, or at least an RFA. And I think that's what I had put in a recent article uh, when they were talking about defensemen. But someone like Chickren, that's why it's attractive. It's locked up. You can plan for it. It's literally, well, it's money out of your bank, but it's money, you know, money in the bank. You don't have to worry about it. Yeah. That's, that's kind of the problem that I see is you're, you're just requiring a lot of gymnastics moving forward, even with the current, the current roster. So where, whereas I disagreed with you that Pasternak wouldn't be quote unquote worth it because of everything you'd have to give up at the same time, I'm going to um, also say on the record that I think the best situation for the Islanders um, to, to pursue would be Kevin Fiala, just because one, that's your surefire first line upgrade, your 30 goal scorer to play with Barzell. He's not going to break the bank. He's not going to cost you as much as, uh, a Pasternak or even a Brink hat would um, with, like I said to you last week, Michael Russo stating that even a first round pick Arthur Kalia from the Los Angeles Kings was quote unquote too rich for Minnesota. Uh, or I think actually I forget which side he too said it rich? was for. He said a first round pick and Arthur Kaliev would be too rich of an ask and that it would need to be something cheaper. And in my mind, if, if the Islanders said here's 13th overall pick and and Kiefer Bellows, if Cali Evan the first is too rich, uh, first, uh, first, all, I'm sorry, not first overall, 13th overall pick first round. Um, and Kiefer Bellows could get it done if, in fact, a first and Cali Evan is too rich, because again, that's a little better than for what... the GM, for the not the wild, for the other team, correct? Yeah, I understand that. I, look, it could be Wallstrom and uh. Well, right, and that's and my point. Too. Like, that, I, I think that would be, you know, for and, a guy. Well, so like, here's the thing: if it's if it's Wallstrom who's got a higher ceiling than Bellows, it's going to be a second round pick in my mind. And, and the reason why I say that in 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 detail is because 
the reason why Fiala makes the most sense is because you're not paying what you would pay for a Pasternak, right? Now you still have assets to make that next move. That, if yeah, you want to go discussed. get Chikrin. That's what that's what right. I was saying. That's what I was saying a few weeks ago when we had gone over this. And we brought up right. Fiala that and so he's get, a, and he's an RFA. So yeah, you have you, control. He's exactly. gonna sign with you. The thing is, so it's a trade, but you're also signing. It's almost like a UFA pickup where you yeah. know, and then you then that the thing is if if a Bavillier and whatever is gonna get Chikrin from the coyotes, there you go. Now you're really moving and you're and you're elevating the entire roster Absolutely. instead of plopping Pasternak on the top, having given away a little bit and 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 maybe struggling. Right. Absolutely. You don't want to you don't want to have Bellows in every night if he's just not meant to be in every night. If this was a different team and they're going through rebuild, I absolutely want to see more out of him. If only to show that he's an asset to move. But at this point, I don't want to see him. If he was if he was going to play with on that third line with uh Peugeot and Palmieri, you know what? I'm kind of here for that. Like, there's a lot of room there for him to kind of learn the game and 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 build some chemistry with them. Do I rather, but I rather Parise? You bet. So I'm happy that that's the line. Yeah. Um, do I want Bells on the second line with Lee and Nelson? Uh, no. I, I'd rather Wallstrom be there and then Barzell Fiala X. Now the problem is fill the X. It's so funny you say that because I uh, wrote an article the other day about um, Kiefer Bellows and what his contract might look like. And believe it or not, he spent the most time uh, with Brock Nelson on the second line in in any of his deployment. And he had the best numbers at like a 54% Corsi 4 um, and some really good high danger scoring chance numbers and stuff like that. He actually did really well in an elevated role uh, in and, the and top six. When you're so playing with I don't players know, like it's, that. Yeah, that's, that's I, true I too. But I mean, if he can, if he can hack it at, at, in the top six with a with a guy like Nelson and it works. I'm oh, not he's listen, look, he's we, a hard we can talk guy. about that later, but oh yeah, he he's a hard working guy. And that we're again, that's where like when some of these moves come into play, I want us to think about what that next step is too. Right. Yeah. So you move this guy and this is that. Right. Okay. So maybe you can't move Bailey and he's there. All right, are you cool with that on as your second line still? Or maybe he's maybe he becomes the playmaker on the first line, and you're trying to find you know then maybe Bell is on that second line for your if Walsh is still around. Like there are those little details where you have to consider that as you as you're making these moves. No longer right. is Bavillier there at least on paper to be like all right, he's a bright spot. Even if game in and game out, he doesn't always show up. Yeah, it's, it, it 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 used to be at least a little bit of a comfort to be like all right, he could. We're waiting for it. He's there. You know, like you're kind of then figuring out some other stuff. Uh. With with the bellows to see if he can play every single game, um, and and figure things out from there. So, um, yeah, I don't think it's as easy as just plop and poster knock in there. I think there's a little yeah. bit of a ripple effect around the roster. And again, I will root for them as hard as anybody. But uh, you know, before that, in in the leading up to that moment, um, I have a lot of questions. Um. So. I just wanted to circle back to the Cassidy situation real quick. You know, the, the the thing is that it looks like things could be crumbling in Boston, partially because of the head coaching rift and and another reason because of their general manager. There seems to be disagreements there about um, not taking care of their own. And I just wanted to make a quick note that you won't see this kind of thing coming from the Islanders as long as Lou Labarello is in charge. Say what you will about how he's handled the roster. But players love playing for Lou Lamorello. Um, thinking back to not dealing Chara and Green at the deadline, players take notice to those kind of things in the organization and outside of the organization. And, you know, again, when Devin Taves came back to Long Island for the first time and at UBS Arena, he even went as far as to say, as I love Lamorello. I gave him a big hug when I saw him. I know he traded me, but I have the utmost respect for that guy. And, there's just something about the way Lamorello handles his team and his players that people love playing for him. So you're, you'll never see this kind of thing coming from the Islanders as long as Lou Lamorello is at the helm. I, I could, I could agree with that. I can definitely, I can definitely see that. Yeah. Um. All right. So moving forward, I still sticking around with the Bruins. I just wanted to talk about how the Islanders could possibly upgrade their blue line. We talk about Chikrin a lot. Um, but I was looking at the numbers and and there are some 
um, other teams that have players that could be available. The, the Bruins are possibly going through this rebuild. And I know that there were a plethora of surgeries that went on for Boston Bruins players this this summer so far. Marchand, Grizzlick, Riley, um, a few others, too, that I, I can't remember off the top of my head. However, I was wondering your thoughts on plucking some of those blue liners or at least one of those blue liners from the Boston Bruins, starting with Matt Grizzlick, who was an analytical darling this year. He had amazing analytics. He, he was in, in, in elite percentiles in pretty much every category you want to see um, from a defenseman. Plays a similar defensive style in Boston. Um, could he be an, an upgrade to the, to the Islanders' top four? He makes 3.7 something million a year. He will be out until November. Do, can the Islanders acquire him, though, as I mean, a top four option? I think it depends on what the asking price is. Uh, I think the price is, is okay um, at three point close to 3.7. Um, for this year and, and next year. So he's got a little bit of term. Problem is he's, you know, he's 28 with two years left. And if he plays really well for you, I know Lamarillo loves his veterans. So yeah. he's not afraid to to do that necessarily. Um, I think bo- both of them, Grizzlick's been really consistent. He's been nothing if not consistent yeah. over, over the course yeah. of his career. Um, he's He's been fairly healthy outside of the, tw- the shortened uh, 2021 season. Um, they've been to the playoffs. They, they've kind of made long runs together. Um, out, really outside of this year where they played less than 10 games in the playoffs for the first time in uh, in, in a long time. Yeah. Um, Riley, yeah, he's he's at $3 million this season, next season. That's that's really good. That kind of allows you to do a, you know, a lot of other things. Um, yeah, and the, the thing about Riley, too, real quick before you, before you continue with that, he also had surgery, but he's not out as long. He'll be out for three months, which puts him at September. He'll be ready to go for training camp, and he was another defenseman who again really good analytics um he's a good puck mover but he's he's more he's more it's it's weird he's a defensive defenseman he's really good at keeping the puck out of the back of his net but he's also good at pushing pace forward and skating the puck out of the zone and into the offensive zone which i feel like pairing that with noah dobson would work really well because if he's really good in his own end defensively that could give dobson more room on the ice to skate the puck and and push puck up play but he can do that also if need be yeah, I wonder if like with Grizzly and if, if he's going to be out um, on through November, how the Islanders get through that period with him not there. Um, again, I I I wonder how I I think there's a lot of calls for Salo to be next to Mayfield on that third pair. It's possible, and and I largely agree with that. A part of me thinks that that seventh defenseman might get used a little bit more. Whoever that might wind up being, whether that's Green. I know we discussed Nick Letty as as somebody that might be that uh, play that role. I think that'd be a really good mentor for um, not only if you know do Letty and Mayfield have a history, but that'd be a good mentor for Salo if they can get him for really cheap on, for a third pair, and you're not playing him every night. I, I think that's that's definitely worth it. Um, so you're you're potentially having to sign two defensemen. Um, I went through the other day. Um, Specifically, I went through defensemen, um, and and I and I talked about Letty. There's some, you know, in theory, some front runner um, internal candidates. Problem is, there are right handers. Yeah. Grant Grant Hutton is is a UFA. He's a right hander. He he played really well, but he was filling in Mayfield's role. So that that's not going to work out. Parker uh, Wallerspoon. Um, he's an RFA. I think he's got a little bit, he's 24. He doesn't look like he's ready. Like they haven't shown any real interest in him in the last few seasons and and kind of giving him a shot. Robin Salo did get a bunch of games with the Islanders. Um, Sebastian Ajo might be that person to split time with Salo. Maybe that's a really cheap option there. I don't know that I love it. I'm not going to do a backflip over it. That definitely gets the job done. It gets you kind of split time with Salo with a guy that's been there before. He's 26 years old. Um, he's another UFA. They do have to actually sign him. And that gives you a lot more money to kind of pick up that second pair of D and then your one or two forwards that you're that you're going to add. Um, 
thought about guys like Ben Schrott. I think we've talked about him, Ian Cole, um, as as kind of second pair defensemen with, uh, you know, they're they're both UFAs to play with them. So like, there's. Do you want to just have it locked up? Like, I, I don't know how you fill the roster with a Grizzly if he's out. I don't. I wonder if Riley has. You know, did he play in the top four this year? Um, I I think he did. So I'm, you know, I'm not really, I'm not really sure about. I don't know too much about him. Like, is is he the right type of player to play next to Dobson? Is is that what you're kind of looking for? With how we know that the team likes to balance out somebody with a little offense with somebody with a little more defense. How how does that look with the Riley? Um, Actually, he played uh, both. He, he split time with McAvoy and then on the second pair with uh, Clifton. No, not not Clifton. Sorry. Uh, oh, God, who's on the right side in Boston? Carlo? Yes, that's it. Carlo. Thank you. So, I mean, all right, that sounds like it would be, again, uh, save for the injury, that sounds like it might be. Uh, this is Riley you're talking about? Yes. So, yeah, I, may, I mean, maybe that is the right choice. He's, he's cheap for $3 million uh, for this year next. Can you get that deal done with with Boston? Right, and what is that? And, the, and what does it the look ask? Like? The ask was only a third round pick, um, according to Shinazawa. That's was that at the deadline last year. No, as of like right now. I think for in uh, inter uh, intra conference within the conference, that might be a little higher. Maybe, 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 it's... which is which is worth a second rounder. I, sure. I, I give that up. I give that up all day. Right, exactly. Um, I, I that if that's going to lock up your second pair, and then you can you still have a lot of money to, to kind of work with, especially if you can shed somebody. People, I think I I, I always forget that Bavillier's got like a four million dollar contract, or, or even a little more than that. So yeah, it's like four point one eight. So if you don't have to deal with Bavillier, and you're just going to add a Riley for a, a second. Or yeah, I mean, I mean, think a about third it. and a bellows. I don't care. Like it, it, that doesn't even bother me at that point. Right. Think, think um, about it. If you get Riley that's... for three, you sign Dobson for five. You're only tying up eight million dollars. They they had twelve. Let's just say you trade a a, a Bailey. You free up another five. Um, you can keep a Villiers on the second line. You can keep a Villiers and, and pursue that first line free agent. Or yeah, you maybe you move, yeah you you move you have Bavillier, Barzell, Fiala on the first line. And you can keep Varlamov as, and you can have a and you can keep solid Varlamov. goaltending tandem. You can have a solid blue line. You can have a solid first line. It's looking solid all around. I mean, tell me. All right, we'll let's go through this. I'll go through the numbers. So 26, 13, and Fiala. That's your first line. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 18. 18, 13, Fiala. Yeah, I like that better. 27, 29, 26. 11, 44. Uh, twenty-one, and then the fourth line. You can keep Avilier and move him up and give him that real final shot at being yep. a, at, at being a top six player. Yep. If he can't do it with them, he can't do it. Right. Hurts his value long term, but if he really nails it, he really is going to nail it. Yep, I'm with you on that 100. percent And that's a good. That's a solid second line with with Wallstrom. Um. So that might be. That might be what the move is. If you can, if you can save. Um, you know, and that doesn't mean Ratu doesn't, you know, squeeze his way in there somehow and make make Bavillier expendable at some point, yeah, uh, to free up some space for trade deadline, right? I don't, I don't know how that would, you know, Brise winds up back on the first line with Barzell and Fiala, which I wouldn't be super mad about, but as long as he turns it on the first half of the season, um, that it's not going to be a bad thing. Um, so I, 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 you know, depending on how that that works out for them there, but that's a real deep team. It's a real yep. deep team. Like I, I don't know how you. I, I I wouldn't be upset at all. In fact, I'd be a little excited about that going into the season. If everyone can kind of turn it on early earlier, especially you know, you're you're looking at uh, can Walsham take the next step? Can Palmieri wake up? Can Bavillier wake up? And those and that's your. Those are the players that you're really waiting for, to do that in the play in in the regular season in the playoffs, right? Barzell is going to play really well. Fiala is going to play really well. Uh, Nelson's going to play well. Uh, Lee is as Nelson goes. Um, you have you have guys money in the bank in the in the circle in Pajot and 
um, and Sezikis. Uh, I'm not. I'm not really sure where the flaw is there, unless 18, 26, 21 don't show up. Yeah, like you're you're putting a lot of you're putting an awful lot of faith in them, but they're going to be the players. Uh, Fiala needs to do what he needs to do out there. He needs to score 30 goals. Barzell needs to put up a billion assists. 18 needs to put the puck in the net. He needs to be the little engine that could, as as uh, as we've seen he can be. Yep. Um, Wallstrom needs to be the sniper. He, he needs to find the back of the net. That power play needs to get completely redone, and they they need to be able to move that puck and snap it around. So that that's not a bad lineup. I don't know if you see it in the bottom of our notes there. Like I, I'm yep, happy with I see that. it. I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. So um, if you can save, if you're gonna get. If the argument to get O'Reilly or someone like that, where they're a dependable top four but not a Chikrin, that makes a whole lot of sense if you if it means you're not giving up assets. Absolutely, and and I, I think that including you know, because, players on the roster, right? Like uh, you want to keep a Villiers, just just because. Yeah, no, I I, I agree with you. And you get a Chikrin, you, know, you get a, if that means you're getting a Chikrin, trade Bavillier, right? But if you can course. help it, and you don't have to kind of guess. Uh, let's you know, or maybe they sign somebody else. I don't. I'm not really. You know, nine million dollars between Villiers and Bailey off the books. You could probably sign two forwards. Yeah. And no. I, frankly, I agree you need that. to. Right. It just. It's a lot harder to do that. Uh, absolutely. And and the thing is, um, uh, again, being able to look, Lamarella wants to upgrade the defense offensively. Um, does that necessarily mean that they have to do that via? bringing in a chicken who's an offensive defenseman i i don't think so i think a guy like bringing in a guy like riley opens the ice up more for dobson to be able to wheel and deal a little bit more and i know he scored 50 points how much more can he possibly score but i i think that's the that's the um that that's the the model here right that if you get a guy who can open up the ice for a little more for somebody else the, the offense will come so um I think that Riley is a really good fit. I think that Grizzly is a really good fit too. If you can make it work for that month that he might be out, um, yeah, that's, I, the, I like, that's the problem. Riley, that's the problem. All of a sudden, right at the price point, and the well, fact and that he's not injured becomes more of a of an option. Although, like I said, I, it, he's he's a veteran. He's been around. I wonder if there are a lot of players out there that Lamarell can get for three or four million for that second pair, right? In free agency again, thinking about a bench shot. I don't know if Ian Cole would, you know, both Ian Cole and Ben Schrott might stay with their respective teams. Um, a lot of unfinished business. As third know, pair in, guys. In, as second pair guys to play with Dobson. Yeah, maybe. Maybe maybe I, Cole. I, I didn't I'm love not saying, Sherratt. I'm not I know they saying gave I, up a lot for him, but he did not he did not live up to that. And I don't think he was even worth it when they traded for him at, at the time. I maintain I'm just looking at how I'm trying to look at it how Lemrella would. He's yeah, a veteran guy that would okay. be uh, kind of stay at home, solid player next to a Dobson, so Dobson can kind of do his thing. I I think that's, I think that's fair, right? I, I just trying to just trying to get in his head. I think O'Reilly makes way more sense if he can get it done, especially because he's younger, and you could probably keep him around after those years, uh, a, after the two years are up. Whereas you know Ben Schrott's thirty one, but. Yeah. Yeah, Lemro likes his veteran guys. I don't love that approach every single time. I'll take a 28 year old veteran versus a 31 year old, especially if it means you can, you know, that window stays open for an extra few years with somebody like Riley, or at least it opens a little bit wider in the short term, which is fine. Yeah. The Amas win the cup and then, you know, on the other side, they have to rebuild or, you know, whatever the case is, they're, they're second round and out for a few years. I guess everyone deals with that. Hopefully we don't have too short of a memory, <laughs> but. You know, I'm trying to that, and Ian Cole. I think both of those players want to stay where they're at with those teams that they can, sure, because they were really good, and it's likely they'll be really good again next year. They're good if they stick around. Um, I don't think Sherrod lived up necessarily, as you said, but he's still really good. Um, he, you know, had a heck of a run with Montreal the year before. Again, is I'm trying to just make a guess at what Lamorella might want to do. It's not what I think would be the best one. Well, one more guy that we have to talk about, and let's just say that uh, for some reason it fails for uh, the Islanders to retrieve Kevin Fiala, and, and they uh, want to stay in that age range, right? They want to stay with a player of, of, of Fiala's caliber, maybe even a little bit better. 
Well, again, who else but Friedman and Marek talking about who could be available this summer. And in that same breath, they mentioned Alex Dabrinkit after talking about what is going to go on in Chicago. Um, same question as I've asked you earlier. Can the Islanders afford an Alex Dabrinkit? And I'll, I'll run through his numbers quickly. Um, he has two 41 goal seasons and last season in 52 games he scored or I'm sorry 56 games he scored 32 goals he's 24 years old and he's on a bridge deal he will need one I think after this season maybe maybe in two seasons I could check that right now he has one year Um, left at 6.4 okay yeah one year left at 6.4 but again 24 years old 41 goal score two times and he was on a 40 goal pace again last season can the Islanders afford to trade for an Alex to bring it? I'll reverse what I said about Pasternak here, because then you're not worried about it. Bavillier is half a lost cause. And you're and the reason why he stays in the lineup this year is because you're giving him one more chance. I guess that's fine. Cause I think he only has a year left anyway. He has two years left. So if you're if you're giving him a year or two anyway, I ship, ship him off. He's worth an asset to somebody, some other team that might value him yeah. with a little bit of term. Fine, get get lost. The brink at is twenty four. That's the big thing here. And he's yes, got he's, yes, he's going to need a contract. Yeah, he's got forty goal season under his belt. Forty and- goal seasons, and he had a a forty goal pace last season. That this is a guy I throw the friggin' farm at. Yeah, I think it's okay to give up a. B- Bavillier, if that's what they're interested in with a rod to and a first round pick, I think that's absolutely worth the the cost because he's going to absolutely light it up with uh, with a Barzell. Yeah, you know, yeah, because he, again, who's Matthew Barzell's favorite player? Patrick Kane. Patrick Kane, and who does Matthew Barzell style his play after? It partially, partially that. Of, and who does Alex Kane. DeBrinket play with? Yeah, I think it works out. I mean, he's he plays right and left wing, but he's a right shot, um, so he, he could play the right side with with Barzell. I think it'd be interesting to see who plays that left side. Um, so I, I, that's definitely um, you might have to. I don't know if you can afford to keep a belly in your lineup, but it definitely it, it makes it interesting that way. Like you, you still have to have that depth somehow. Um, I, I wonder how you like. Is it? 12 13 to bring cat you might be and then, you might you know, be able to throw a paul mary on that line three righties i doubt that that's going to happen yeah that's true so i'm trying to like again i'm only moving bavillier up and bailey so up put lee back on that line it that could work and then you're but you're that's a lot of firepower on one line which could work but then you you, you can't be the oilers the Islander system works because it's wave after wave of kind of the same thing, right? I know you can move guys around. I don't. Th- I don't think it's impossible. Um, I think you've in, in that case because it's not Pasternak and it's not one year. Debrinket still an RFA after that contract is up, and it's two more years. This season and no, it's just this season. Yeah, just this um, season. cap friendly is updated. I had the same problem the other day. Uh, cap friendly is updated. It is just this season. Yeah, so I I think that's a little bit different. I mean, if it's uh, twelve thirteen to bring cat twenty seven twenty nine Wallstrom, same bottom six as before. I don't hate that either. Right. If that again a first, um, uh, Bavillier and, and Ratu. I think the Ratu thing hurts a little bit. And then the pressure is really on Wallstrom to nail it. I agree. Um, I th- I don't think Bailey is the long term option on that line, so you'd hope that a trade deadline acquisition was was there. Um, the issue is that with Bailey still in the lineup, that's a lot of money. So can you make that move? You also gave up a little bit of leverage for whatever you're going to potentially trade for in a defender. Yeah. So you better hope a guy like Riley's around, especially at that price. And you better hope Salo can go in the lineup too. Cause I don't, I'm not playing armchair GM right now in, uh, in cat friendly, but I, that might be getting close. You had 12 million to work with, but you got to bring some guys back this, this season. Like you have, you have deals to sign right now. 
um, RFA or otherwise. And if Walsh is part of a longer term deal, and then Barzell and Sorokin need deals in the in the you know next season and the year after, yeah, it gets a little tricky. And then you got to resign to Brinkat next again. You, you still have to resign to Brinkat next summer. He's an RFA. It's a different situation, and it's Lemerola. Not yeah. impossible, but it's that conversation just becomes a lot more difficult. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying I wonder what it looks like if they did. So that's where that's kind of where my my head immediately goes to. And Barzell's also an RFA. He's going to ask for a lot more, and they should throw, you know, they should kind of hand over the checkbook and say, "What do you want?" and just go <laughs> and, and go from there to, to some degree. Although there was some debate around what he should be getting. Barzell. Yeah. $10 million was too rich. Um, I don't know if eight and a half or nine works. Eight and a half by eight. I think that's eight, fair. Eight years, eight and a half. Um, you know, I think he has, he obviously has the potential to score more goals. So, and, and, and points overall. I don't know that I would take, you know, always oh, a 40 point guy, he's a 50 point guy. That's, that's just not what, uh, it's not really who he is. It's clear who he is. It's, it's a system that they're playing around. So, to kind of be like, oh, you should be doing more. It's like, what do you want me to do out there? What are you expecting from me? Right. You know, again, he's nothing if not consistent. He's he's been a you know a sixty point guy outside of forty five points to fifty five games, um, in in the short season. But you know he's a pretty much money in the bank sixty point player with essentially garbage around him. And then he had seventeen points in twenty two games and fourteen and nineteen the last two playoff runs. It's clear they can step up. It, it, you know, like. That's what I'm that's what I'm looking at. He's got 38 points in 49 playoff games. That's what I'm paying attention to. Yep. That's a nine that's if if you're gonna pay ten million dollars for a player, which I, I thinking about it, that might be a little too rich just you know for Lamorello. But I don't know, eight and a half, nine. I eight, think that's fair. I you know, I think that's that's totally fine. I don't know what that leaves you on the bone for anybody else, but I don't know. Look, if you're gonna go for it, get it to bring catch. I, I go for it again. Um, I'll forget. The, the, I won't open cap friendly until the Islanders are out of the playoffs next season. If they, if they, you know what I mean. Like <laughs> I, I do. I will not give one shit about what their cap friendly looks like next season. Yeah, I will, no, read it. I will not click on one article talking about it. Whatever they have to do with the trade deadline, add, add, add. Do your thing. Win the cup. Fine. Yeah. Now, if they lose, I'm going to be heartbroken, and it's a lot of good content for us next summer. So it sounds like a win-win to me. <laughs> I'm not going to be upset about any of this. Selfishly. <laughs> Selfishly, this is perfect for me. Um, I'll just be upset. I get made fun of for being an other fan. Anyway, Like, it doesn't matter if they won the cup. They Someone would make some excuse about it. Sure. Blah, 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 blah. Um, so, yeah, I, maybe I, I just say go for it. Get, if you yeah, get, I'm with if you. you get, if you get all uh, good old Debbie over here, uh, let's make it happen. I'm, I'm with you. Fialis remains to make the most sense to me, but if the Brinkett is going to be available and Chicago is willing, that's a guy that you just have to inquire about. You have to go for. He just he checks so many boxes, um, and, and again, he would be a long term solution for the long standing scoring problem. Uh, that the Islanders have. So it, it allows them to keep a lot of the depth that they need around him. Right. It doesn't and, make and, sense to like, you got to move this player and this player. If they can kind of get, they can get a Fiala and a Riley type three, yeah, three and a half right. million dollars, maybe even four and not have to trade a Bavillier for him. I don't know what, I don't know what Fiala would cost. I think that's the first domino. If, once that happens, then maybe the defense thing happens. Although I, I'm le- I, I kind of lean towards the defense thing going first, just because that's what Lamro is. I feel like more interested in, and I don't like moving from the net out. You have your two goalies shore up the D. You're good up the middle. Find your scoring. Um, I, I guess I it could go either way. It could be that could be that winger or whatever. But if they go for Chikrin, it might be just kind of harder to do. Um, just because of what what assets you need, did they have enough for that? That's the that's kind of what the problem is. Yeah, you, I, again, you got to think I, outside the box when it's when it's complicated. And, and one of the things about the Brinkett too is that he not only 
fits so well because he checks off the boxes. But I, I think that he extends that window to win a little bit longer just because of the ripe age of 24. I think not. Yeah, this is both a long and a short term extension of what what the Islanders could do. And I think in the short term, it definitely opens up the window a little bit wider, depending on right. who they're able to keep. What is I'd be that's what I'm curious about is what the rest of the roster is. I'm not I do not want to confuse this. I've, maybe I've said this like 11 times so far on the show. I want those things to happen. I'm just also thinking about what the rest of the roster looks like. Understandable. So it's not just about getting this one player and we move on and I and we check in October 1st. That's just not what <laughs> you know, it's like it's just not that easy. It's it's going to be a complicated journey. It's like we got to brink it and forgot to do anything else. <laughs> well, right. Or or they're just like, oh yeah, Bellows is just in the lineup now. Guess we're crossing our fingers. Like that kind of makes it a half ass move, right? I rather I want to see the the strategic kind of planning on okay, we went with Fiat, they went with Fiala and they did this and this. Yeah. Like I said to that that roster before, that forward group before, um, that's great. And then you can and then you add on defense and maybe that's a Riley type, and all of a sudden, uh, and Salo's in the lineup, and maybe that's your question mark is can Salo play every single night next to an Aho? I'm much more willing to roll the dice there. Shore up the offense, shore up the top four, you shield your third pair the best you can. Um, if it needs to be Andy Green and Robin Salo splitting time just to make it so that there's some security there for Lambert Lamorello and the rest of us. Fine. That totally works for me, but make sure that for that forward group and that second pair are, uh, we're all kind of short up there. I, I agree with you. And the thing, the, the biggest takeaway here for me with, with all of this, you know, Pasternak to bring Johnny Gaudreau, Fiala Forsberg. Again, we said this earlier, Lamoureux has to land one of these guys this summer. Has yeah, I don't know to. what that does. Like, you know, it's it's in Louis Trust, and I th- I think it's waning, at for sure. It has to work. Like Panarin didn't sign, and then the Islanders went on runs. Like Tavares didn't sign, and then they went on runs. That's only going to work so many times. And it was just clear that this roster was lacking. All of the excuses aside, it was clear this roster was lacking, and they just. Even when they were good, they couldn't do it consistently, which has been a little bit of the kryptonite kind of forever. Is wow, this this is a good team if they if only they could do it on a regular basis. And that's even been a little bit of a problem. They've gone on these runs. Heading into each of these last two, you know, the the last two season, the last two playoff runs, they were playing like shit going into the playoffs. Like it's it's a little hard to ignore that, you know, pause aside and a player like they made it all the way to where they did. I don't really care how they got there, but it's clear that the consistency thing is a problem. And they that's part of what they need to solve this year in the regular season. They can't just oh, we'll make we'll get to the playoffs and figure it out from there. It's clear this this conference and the top teams are continuing to stay really good with a, with a few teams trading in and out. The there's not a lot of room Carolina's not going anywhere. Tampa's probably not going anywhere. The Rangers are only going to get better. Um, the, maybe Boston slides out, but you you don't think anyone else is doing anything? Like, it, it's it's really hard. So yes, they absolutely have to nail something. Yep, I uh, absolutely agree with you there. Um, all right, we're going to close out the show by talking about a former Islander who has. Uh, announced his retirement. Griffin Reinhardt has retired from hockey. Um, and although it's, it's we- a little weird to talk about him as a former Islander, he played exactly eight games <laughs> in an Islander uniform. Um, no, he former... didn't. He, he, played, he only played eight games? Eight games for the New York Islanders. That's, a, Islander. that's crazy that I have to actually look it up. Go ahead, look it up, because it's eight games for the Islanders after being drafted fourth overall in the first round of the 2012 NHL draft. Uh, He was later traded to the Edmonton Oilers. Didn't work out for him him there either. Played 29 games, one assist, uh, and was mostly spending his time in, in Bakersfield 
moved on to the Blackhawks organization playing for the Chicago Wolves. Uh, no, sorry. Was that? No, that was for um, the Vegas Golden Knights. Interesting. Um, didn't work out for him there either. After 2018-19, he moved on to the KHL, then the Dell, and then a league in Belfast. And now he has retired from hockey. That's incredible. What we did get out of Griffin Reinhardt, Matthew Barzell and Anthony Bavillier. Thank you, Peter Shirelli. Yes. That's, uh, <laughs> yeah. Th- it's, wow. I can't believe he only played. I, I know he've spent a lot of time, uh, maybe in just one season, but quite a bit of games in Bridgeport. Yeah. Um, 59. Where he had 22 points, seven goals, and 15 assists. So it's like you, you, you could see it. You could see it happening for him. God, it just did, super didn't. It just and then, super didn't. <laughs> and then, and then they, and then Snow trades him for wow. Yeah, I just uh, for the for the assets. Look, Snow was was far from perfect, and there, there's a lot of problems. But when he nailed it, he really did nail it. Oh yeah, that was uh, that's a heck of a move. And you know the fact that it's still playing off, even if it means Bavillier's traded for something else, that's still kind of incredible. It could be a upgrade as far as if if uh, Bavillier is traded, right? They that's get that's what I mean. So that trade for, tree grows you know, a little if, bit. If if he becomes a, a chicker and you're like, holy crap, thank you, Griffin Reinhardt. Yeah, that's brutal, man. That's yeah. that's really tough. Uh, it's funny. Your reaction was perfect, too. I said he played eight games in the NHL as an Islander. And you said, no, he didn't. There's no way. And had eight to go games? look it up yourself. Eight games as a New York Islander, man. Eight games. One in the playoffs. How about that? So nine. In 14-15. Yeah, that, that's still, like, really. I mean, yeah, that's that's some vision uh you know, for the organization to be like, all right, maybe he, maybe they thought he really was good enough and they just need, they wanted the assets or maybe they were like this. Everyone probably is really high on this guy. He hasn't played a whole lot. No one, no one has a good feel for him, but us, well, let's dump him and get the assets while we can. Like or either he, way, that's a good move. Or he duped Peter Shrelly. Oh yeah. He just dunks on him. That's uh yeah. After I mean, he got they, uh, Jordan Everly for Ryan Strom too. <laughs> Who, well, by the way, makes the Larson deal. Who, by uh, the way, Strom is is a scratch tonight. He he could not overcome that injury from last game. That's tough. I like that he's kind of made a career. I agree with you. Yeah, I like seeing like guys like him, you know, Need Rider, um, doing well after they were essentially mishandled in the organization in the previous uh, regime. Yeah, I mean, that's look at Need Rider, um. Strom, I don't know if there are, there are some other players, not too many that have like hit. I mean, Hosang doesn't seem like he's he's kind of taken on uh, anything. He, yeah, right. So it's I think that's that works out. You know, the Islanders could have easily gotten burned there, um, and you feel for that. You you feel for Hosang for for not uh, I don't want to say for figure not figuring it out. Whatever he couldn't overcome. It's uh, is a huge bummer because there's a lot of potential there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, even in the Olympics, I, I don't think he did anything crazy, and he had to cancel his contract with Toronto so I, with the Marlies. So I'm not sure where he went after that. Well, good luck, Griffin Reinhardt, with the rest of your whatever you're doing. Um, I I want to say you had a good career. Yeah, I mean, at he, least look, he played. He, he played a at bunch the pro of games. Level since yeah. 2014 so he played yeah I, I think that's more than a lot of people uh would ever hope for you know some people just get a shift um some people just dress and <laughs> never they take warm-ups like it's yeah you, it made it as long as you could and i guess i guess kudos and sorry it didn't work out man that's uh, that's rough griffin reinhardt calling it quits and so are we tonight uh want to say thank you to uh, the Hockey Podcast Network, uh, the Hockey Writers. Check out Isles Fix, an excellent curated newsletter. You can find my work at the fourth period. You can find John's work as the Hockey Writers. Please rate, review, and subscribe wherever you listen to or watch the show. Uh, and until next time, everybody, let's go, Islanders.